Speaking of which, this is my top 20 video of the Arcane Bullshit Tarot deck, which is not really a tarot deck, by artist Evan Doherty, which you may have seen Doherty's presence, Arcane Bullshit, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. He does some of the best satirical, uh, really awesome kind of lowbrow art uh, that seems like nonsense, but is really quite deep. And I got the deck a few weeks ago. I was lucky enough to get in on the Kickstarter for it, and it was really exciting. But it's not, like I said, really a tarot deck. It doesn't have a tarot system. The cards are each unique. There are 105 of them. So as you can see, these are my top 20, which there's just, I'm not going to take the time to go through this entire deck. I mean, you can see how thick this is. It's really impossible to shuffle. I did get this amazing tarot bag, but... The deck, the entire deck, I don't think fits in it. I haven't tried to shove the entire deck in it yet. Um, the book, which is this great little book here, um, comes with every card numbered in it. There's no pictures in the book, but there's no numbers on the cards. They're not in alphabetical order. It is really tricky to go through it. Um, it is definitely not a tarot deck. It is, however, one of those decks that seems like a nonsense deck, and it is a nonsensical deck when you first get it, and then it turns out to be really quite brilliant. Not just proof that you can use anything as divination, but it is also, it really has some genius to it. The box and the embossing that's on here, I mean, the attention to detail is really kind of fantastic. Um, the whole de deck is just beautifully, beautifully done. I suspect with these dark edges and things, it may not wear well. The cardstock is really good and thick. I mean, he it was worth every penny, and I actually do not think it was an incredibly expensive deck. My only disappointment is that I really only had money to do the Kickstarter initial thing for the deck. I did add the bag on later. Um, the time that it hit my bank account, it pretty much wiped out my bank account because it took months and months for the charge to go through, as often happens on Kickstarters. But it was not expensive. And I wish that I had gotten the, basically, the, the, the layout cloth because it's just so much fun. So I am going to just quickly go through the top 20 or my favorite 20 cards from this deck so far. I am still working with it. It is pretty amazing, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, your, your favorites may differ. There are 105 whopping cards. He has in the book a number of spreads. I'm not going to do an in-depth review, but it's really great. And it is equal parts nonsense and brilliance. It, it really, really is. So my number one card is this guy, Space Death. <laughs> I mean, if, if I look at it and I, you know, we're laying this out in a reading for somebody, I would say that this brings up the things of our, you know, fear of being alone, our fear of dying alone. And also the thing, the idea that, you know, we're all, it's memento mori. We're all going to die anyway. So, you know, it's just that inevitable thing that's going to happen to you and, Hopefully you won't be alone in the cold vacuum of space. His definition is this is generally considered to be a good card with one caveat that you are definitely going to die in space. <laughs> Number two favorite card is Lord of the Hunt. Uh, I kind of dig this one. Um, for the obvious look of, you know, you have these annoying balloon guys and they dance all over the place and they'd be really, really hard to hit with a bow and arrow. Um, you probably would be feeling pretty full of yourself to assume that you were such a good marksman that you could hit this gas bag. Uh, his definition on it, do I have it in the book? Because, of course, i got to go through this. I didn't. Okay, here we go. Be wary of what appears to be easy prey. Aha. 
and stop overestimating yourself. Life is hard and unfair, God damn it. Uh, my third favorite at the moment is knees. For me, I have very bad knees and I am starting to reap the rewards of all of the athletic things I did when, and stupid things I did when I was younger. And knees are something that are these awkward dor dorky things that bend and allow you to distribute your weight and get from point A to point B. Once you lose them, once they start to go, you are really in trouble. They are critical. You always need to depend upon your knees. Now, it's interesting what he says is, in an emerging conflict, you'll have to choose whether to trust your feet or your genitals. <laughs> your ability to bend is your greatest strength. So not far off from my thinking of it, though it does have some delightful absurdities. So my next favorite card, what is this? Are we on number four yet? Is the card of cards, card of cards, cards of cards, card of cards. You know, which is that thing of like infinite possibilities. And also when you put yourself in a box where all you can see is one thing forever and forever, forever, and you cannot get out of it. His definition is just cards, 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 cards. So that's a really good one. This one I really love too, and it is the sword hoarder. And that it may be rather self-evident. I mean, if you are holding on to pain and jealousy, anger, uh, think of any stabby thing, the urge to stab someone, you might be a sword hoarder. And you have to decide, is this something that you want to keep or are you going to cut yourself with your sword collection? What is the most productive thing to do? Now, heaven says, an attempt to reconcile with your former housekeeper will fail. <laughs> it's time to let go of the anger you've been holding on to or maybe start a sword collection. So, you know, see, he's, he's throwing in these little bits of brilliance too. Um, here is another card I absolutely love, which is random clip art. You know, when you go to look for clip art, you're kind of looking for the easy thing uh, that you can just use. And you often come up with a bunch of like cheesy cliche stuff. I know there are a lot of times I'm doing a Google search for an image and all I get is horrible clip art when I'm looking for something really specific and I wish I had the skills to draw the thing that I want myself. And it's really frustrating that I can't. So um, this kind of looks like, you know, cheap, easy shit to me. Uh, he says, random clip art. It is often tempting to fall back on a cheap, ready-made library of solutions, but don't doubt your creative ingenuity. Create your own answers instead of relying on the convenience of cliches or whatever. Just use the cliches, especially if they're in the public domain. So you can see where... You know, he is putting in these these bits of brilliance with the absurdity. Some of his answers are just silly. But I have done readings with these lately that in trying them out that have been really spot on for regular, you know, divination. So never underestimate the power of silly. Everything's fine. You know, how in denial are you going to be? Are you going to be into denial of things blowing up even when you're dead? <laughs> Um, it's, you know, it's like the everything's fine dog. Apocalyptic visions may be the sign of a head injury. Do not place containers of hot or boiling liquids near the edge of a stove, sink, or table. Something will end unexpectedly. I mean, come on, boom. <laughs> so another one that is really kind of painfully obvious, you're fucked. So, you know, sometimes when things are really bad, and really frustrating and painful and you just kind of keep going anyway instead of just you know curling up and realizing you're done for and starting something new um this is like the beating a dead horse uh <laughs> you know message uh his says put more courage and enthusiasm into what you do or take more time to reflect in solitude. It doesn't matter. You're fucked. 
this one I really just kind of love, even though it's, you know, maybe not, you know, it's the 404 error, future not found. You know, sometimes you just have to give up because you're not going to get the answers that you want and you're just going to get frustrated. I think of this card and I think of when people try to do tarot reading after tarot reading and they just get either more annoying answers or frustrating answers or it doesn't make sense. Um, but they just keep doing it anyway when they need to just put it aside and, you know, accept things. So this one says, this one is just a funny joke, you know, like when a website doesn't load or something, or maybe it's really serious and you won't have a future. Just kidding. I wouldn't joke about that or would I? So, you know, you can take it either way. That's one of his kind of fun ones. Uh, this one I thought was rather good too. Um, let me plop that down and plop this up. The false face. This one makes me think of that Billy Joel song, uh, The Stranger. Uh, what is it? We all have a face that we hide away forever. Uh, we take them out and show ourselves when everyone is gone. I, something, something like that. Um, and so you think about like the face that you show people and, you know, also sometimes like how hideous you may think you are or, you know, inside or not. And you've got like the little raven or bird on your shoulder that is telling you, you know, how it is. Um, he puts on here something that appears to be one thing is in fact another thing that appears to be a thing, but is actually another completely different thing concealing another thing. We all wear masks, don't we? I don't. Really nice. Um, Let's see here. So we're making progress. This is going to be a long video, even with 20 cards. Gee whiz. The filthy mattress. Like, sometimes you just got to, like, let the disgusting things in your life go out to the curb or have them properly disposed of. Um, because, you know, mattresses in the curb, really, really gross. Um, you know, I laugh at this because I have a mattress that I got used because I couldn't afford anything else. And when I bought my bread frame, I got a mattress and thank God it's not like this. Thank God it didn't have bed bugs. I think about how lucky I was. It did have some splinters in it, but that's the whole other thing. And it has gotten to the point to where it's so like I can feel the springs. It's not in good shape but I've covered it with all these foam layers and I wish I could discard my mattress and get a new one, but it's not filthy. So I just laugh when I see this card. He says it may be time to discard something very intimate. Stop attributing depth to that, which appears mundane. I think that that definition is pretty damn awesome. Here's another one of my favorite cards. It came up during a reading that I blogged about on my speaking of which almost daily divine blog on speaking of which.com plug 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 which I'm terrible at plugging my stuff and it is a skeleton eating a banana it's got this crazy background on it that just messes with the camera and your eyes um, I personally think about this as when you are trying to like take on things that aren't doing you any good. Like the banana is going to just fall through them. Also the importance of self care and nourishment. Um, I love his definition, which is just plain silly, which is, this is probably about death and also penises. <laughs> but I think about that. That's, that's something that's important to me right now is thinking about self care and are the things that you're doing, really helping your self-care or are they just like, you know, dropping food into a place that it can't do any good? Um, another really good one uh, is, can you read it? Uh, no, Meaningless garbage. There we go. Uh, another one that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, compliments the last card. Um, you know, it's, it's a thought of, Sometimes you need to just take things out and sometimes you dig through things and get something out of them. And sometimes there's really nothing there. I mean, you think of raccoons just digging through the trash and they stuff everything they can in their mouth. Um, but to us, it's like, that's garbage. We threw it out for a reason, right? 
So he says, sometimes meaningless garbage is just meaningless garbage. It's time to let go of things that were once a source of meaning, but are now just weighing you down, like apple cores and fish skeletons, boondock saints on DVD, your parents, your hotmail account, most of your memories, hope for the future, etc. Take out the trash, man. (laughs) Uh, Another one that just cracks me up is, you know, the shitty acoustic guitar guy. You know, there's always that dude like at parties or that starts playing at a cafe or whatever and they're playing those songs that you hate and they just annoy you and there's really no reason for them. It's not like a real gig. (laughs) It's not like they're often really talented, Um, but they just show up. Um, He says, maybe if you stop putting up so many wonder walls, you'd finally have the time of your life. (laughs) This guy is the fucking worst. Nobody knows whose friend he is, but he probably knows Bongo Todd. So, you know, showing up without a purpose, just doing that thing, thinking you're cool when you're not. I just, nothing. This one is brilliant. It's a woman breastfeeding a VCR. This one opens up so much for me. And when I saw him pop it up on his Instagram as one of the cards he was working on, I was just really amazed because to me, the fun thing, there's just the massive pointlessness of sticking your you know, boob in a VCR and trying to, to nurture it. Um, it's going to hurt if it pulls you in like a tape. Ow. It's probably going to maim you. It's not going to actually nurture the VCR. It's not going to do anything for you. So I think of people who are chronic codependent caregivers and people who stay in relationships. I've been one of them where they keep trying to do something for the person and it's completely pointless and they're just getting hurt. Um, He says... Maternal comfort and protection, obsolete technology, (laughs) futile nourishment of a person or thing that cannot be nurtured. This woman is named Kate, or maybe Amber, and she is no longer welcome at Value Village. He is so funny. I highly recommend signing up for his newsletter. Um, I looked forward to his Kickstarter updates every week. And he started a newspaper a newsletter, which you can sign up for, which he will do random things on. He is really funny. So he's not just a funny uh, artist. He's a funny writer. Uh, really enjoyable. This fucking guy. Lately, I feel like this fucking guy, which is not really a good thing. But, you know, it's another of those things like the random acoustic guitar guy. There's always that person who shows up, that that guy who says, well, actually, um, you know, there's always that annoying person who thinks that they know stuff and, or or that, that really irritates you. And they just show up at the, like, most annoying times and bother the crap out of you. And you can't really do anything about it. Um, you know, they're not going to listen. They're not going to, you're, they're just going to cause trouble. Um, he puts on here, who does this fucking guy think he is? He's probably named Chad or Brett or something. This guy shows up at the least opportune moment and he's always got some scheme he's got to tell you about. This card represents annoying shit, distractions, schemes, and general ruining of things by guys. Not all guys. That's me, not him. (laughs) But yeah, uh, just so many things. This one I thought was brilliant. Also, these I all think are brilliant. We're almost to 20. I think I'm like, this is the the, the number 16, 17, 17. Hang in there. Um, It's one of the, the, and I've done it to people too. One of the most annoying things that people can tell you is hang in there. Just hang in there a little longer. I've kind of been in this phase in my life for a while. You know, you can only hang in there so long. And, you know, sometimes you can do something to change your situation. Sometimes you can't. But, you know, it's not always feasible to just hang in there. It's not always going to get better. Sometimes you have to try to do something to change it or ask for help or get a little rowdy. Uh, otherwise, you're going to just get engulfed in flames. Um, this person holding the other person makes me think of those insensitive, like thoughts and prayers, people. 
So he says, should you really hang in there? Maybe just outside the bounds of this image, there's something that's going to make the suffering worthwhile, like a refreshing glass of milk. But maybe the milk is also on fire. At this point, maybe you don't care. If you're in a tough spot, you should try flailing desperately. <laughs> okay, let's wrap these suckers up. I've got uh, three left, I think. Uh, this one also came up for me this week on, on my reading I did on my blog, which is, holy shit, stop asking. I sometimes feel like the holy shit, stop asking person. I often get people, you know, it's like that person who could just Google it or read a book, but they have, they want you to do all the emotional or physical labor of looking it up for them. Um, and so I can see it from that point too. Um, I can also see it from the like, you know, point of, again, like if you've done a million card readings and you're just getting nonsense, maybe you need to stop. Or if you're not getting the answer you want, you just keep asking, you need to stop and, you know, maybe deal with that. So, his definition is, at this point, you should probably fucking know the answer. Just fucking meditate or ask a crystal or a weird gnarled tree branch or your friend Cheryl. I don't fucking care. <laughs> and then the last two. So number 19, favorite cards. King shit. <laughs> you know, some people are just the shit. <laughs> and, you know, it's like... You know, he's made a throne out of a toilet. He has got all the bling. He gives no fucks. He doesn't care what you think. Uh, he's got a crown, even though his head is shit. It's, he's looking at his belly button, too, in case you notice it. Like, it's, it's just the best, the best card. Um, this one's like, own your power, no matter how gross it feels. Anything can be a throne if you sit on it right. I like this philosophy. You know, this goes right in line with my Empress Dammit philosophy. I'm the Empress Dammit. I may not look like the Empress, but I am. Uh, I'm not sitting on a toilet throne, but I get it. I totally get it. And my number 20, finally, after uh, over 20 minutes of video of me rambling with my, pardon my... Uh, my vocal fry, it's just what I got, is the Toilet Angel. So more toilets for you. I This card is like everything. It, it just is everything. You know, I you think about, I, I, I don't know, I, it brings up all kinds of things for me, but um, it kind of has all these elements going on. And in a way, it reminds me of the magician because of that. But... I feel like it kind of tells you that you can get answers in many different places. And sometimes you really have to go through it. Like this is really, it's actually coming out of the toilet. <laughs> and, you know, we've got the heart and the brain, an eye. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, his answer is, sometimes the moral high ground just isn't accessible. If you're willing to descend to some pretty fucking horrible depths, who knows what kind of transformal awakenation might be possibilified. Think about how your situation could be improved by embracing your filthiness. In other words, don't just sit there on the pot. Make something productive. Anyway, that's a very long video just to go through only 20 cards. I mean, these suckers are just, they are all just so crazy, so cool. They are just like, holy crap, arcane bullshit is the best. We have the pregnant babies. You know, I mean, come on. It's just, it, it is really the best. It's the most crass and disgusting, uh, delightfully funny, absurd, brilliant, uh, you know, definitely in the lowbrow art, well executed, beautifully beautifully executed though i mean the the cards are high quality this is not just the kind of deck that you're you know not going to use you will find yourself using this deck if you can get around the imagery i i just think it's 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 the best the greased priest a giant sperm fighting a dove i mean where else are you going to find a deck like this be king shit get evan doherty's deck unless you like 
things that are only really pretty and you just want the simplest thing. And, you know, I'm, for me, these are just great because you really, you don't need the book. You can read them. You can get some real interesting things from your subconscious. So speaking of which, I need to be unconscious soon. So I'm hoping that I can post this video. Uh, uh, pardon my crappy video quality and my uh, strange set here, which is just a tabletop with some light. Um, and um, check out even the inside of this box. I do not have a fancy video cam camera or a great setup. So um, that's the kind of arcane bullshit I have to deal with. Hopefully this video is watchable. If you subscribe to my channel, I will try to put out helpful videos in the future about witchy things, tarot, uh, thoughts, and stuff about spiritual practices. And uh, hopefully the quality will get better. Thanks so much. Best witches.